So it might be a little redundant, but aloha. I'm called Miley. Um, I have spent the last 20 years developing relationships with miners from all over the globe. Um, I handpick rough stones that they bring out of the earth. And with the utmost attention to love and connection, we hand carve one of kind beads and pendants in my studios here in Santa Barbara. And this has been an amazing journey, meeting these individuals who bring the stones out. Um, but tonight, actually, I'd like to talk about the bead. It's one of the oldest artifacts. The bead, it has a long and illustrious history, and it holds a very fond place in the heart of humanity. They've been used uh, for symbols of power, for adornment, for protection. They've been used as exchange of money. I guess you could say I'm a counterfeiter. <laughs> but today, there are literally millions of beads made on this planet. So what makes the beads that I make so special? And I am saying that they are special. Well, after having dozens of people literally from all over the world tell me that they've stepped off an airplane or a boat or been in some far-flung place in the world and had somebody run up to them and said, oh my god, look at, hi, look at, I have my leg, wow, and they made a connection with each other, you begin to wonder. So how do people recognize them? And what are they recognizing? Well, I believe that it's the love and the attention to the energy that stone itself and the attention to the universal energy that makes the difference. That's what we recognize and connect to. So I started cutting 20 years ago when I met a man who had lived for 17 years in North Africa, and he collected Neolithic stone beads. So these beads here date back three to 5,000 years when they were carved. And when I held that strand of bead in my hand, something happened inside. I had a remembrance of waking up, and I had to cut stone. And this is a picture, actually. If you can see these puffy white clouds that are kind of circling my body, I call this the Davic realm, the nature spirits. And this is the spirits. These are actually how, who taught me how to cut stone. I asked for help from them. This picture was taken on film in 1996 at the base of Mount Adams in Washington. So the Davic realm literally led the way. They informed me of the properties of the stones, teaching me the healing attributes, and literally shaping me, even though I thought my job was to shape them. Um, and one thing that they did teach me, which is a unique physical attribute to the Miley bead, is the hole, this hole that's in the bead. So it's carved or beveled to slope into the hole, allowing the energy of the stone not only to move around the stone this way, but through the stone in this direction. But people aren't like running up to you and like checking the hole of your bead to see like, oh, I recognize it. No, they're not doing that, right? So what is it? A few years ago, I was watching a movie called Thrive, and there on the screen was the phenomena that I had been experiencing for a couple of decades. This is called the Taurus Ring. So a Taurus ring is a surface of revolution generated by revolving a circle in three-dimensional space about an axis that's coplanar with a circle, which basically means that it looks like a donut or a red blood cell. This one just happens to be a red blood cell. It kind of looks like that orange chalcedony bead back there, though, doesn't it? And in the movie, they go on to say that the Taurus is nature's way of creating and sustaining life. It is the fundamental energy pattern that invites our alignment at every level of our existence for us to survive and thrive. It appears that nature relies on this one core reappearing pattern to evolve life at every scale. This donut of shaped energy vortex, the Taurus. So we went from the red blood cell to the Earth or the galaxy into the Miley bead. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is which? <laughs> um, I love this connection. And um, I love that there's some kind of scientific basis for these truths that nature taught me. Um, and I admit I love the validation because when you've had more conversations with stones over the last two decades of life than you have with people, you begin to kind of wonder. <laughs> um, so another crazy rock guy, Michelangelo, he said, I, I saw an angel in the marble, and I carved until I set him free. Now my body understands this because 
When I follow the energy, the stone cuts itself with my body. So unlike all precious resources, these are some of the ones I've brought home, um, it's so important that we know where they come from and how they are removed from the earth. And what our relationship to the thing that we're bringing into form is. What is that relationship? So I agree with this time-lapse photographer, Louis Schwartzberg, when he said, beauty and seduction are nature's tools for survival. Because what we fall in love with, we protect. It opens our hearts and it makes us realize that we are part of nature and not separate from it. And this is my quest. In bridging the worlds of man and mineral, when we wear these stones, they remind us of that connection. They help us heal the parts that we've left unloved. My friend, Lawrence Stoller, in his book, Frozen Light, said, crystals come out of their earthen slumber into the light, seeking those keepers who will care for them. They don't need feet. They enlist us to move them around the planet as if they are weights placed on a wheel helping to rebalance the world. I am so grateful for the last two decades and an opportunity to share a teensy bit of the magic of the mineral kingdom. And what we do here, you know, it's all about adorning the body but feeding the soul. Thank you.